Hello everyone and welcome to this video by Endless Engineering on the fundamentals of control systems. In today's video we're going to talk about system response, what a transient response is and what a steady state response is and why are those important for us to know as control engineers or someone who wants to learn how to design control systems. If that sounds good to you, hit that thumbs up button and let's dive right in. So what I'd like to do in this video is to discuss the concepts of transient response and steady state response, not from a mathematical perspective, but kind of from a intuition and concept perspective. So let's conceptualize, let's have this contrived example that I've come up here, come up with here, and let's talk about it and motivate that discussion. So think of this as like a maze or some sort of space, and you have these objects in this space that you can't get onto. To go from point A to point B, you've got to take some route. Now, you're free to do whatever you want, right? So here's three examples of three different solutions to go from A to B. Like this could be me asking you to go to the grocery store, you go from A to B, you pick out your route, you do whatever you want, right? So if I measured the distance that you travel from A, away from A, and plotted that in time, what would I get? So if you were this purple magenta line over here, you can see you start from almost zero distance from A, right here, and then as soon as you start moving, this distance from A starts to increase. Right? It's increasing, 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 and now you turn and you start moving, the distance still keeps increasing, because remember, we're measuring distance from A. So it would be like this line from this point all the way. So it keeps increasing, 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 then you get to this point and you stop, and you're at some distance from B and you've moved so much far away from A and now you've stopped and you'll be there until further notice or infinity for all intents and purposes. You will be at this point, right? Now some other individual took a different route, took this blue route. And what they did was they started here some further, some point further away from A. So see there's like a dis difference here just to keep these uh, sort of matching. And then they started to move away from A. So this distance starts to increase. But then they like turned when they saw this obstacle, they wanted to move this way, so the distance reduced a little bit, and then it started to increase again, the further they started to move out. And now they started moving straight down, so they moved faster away from A, and then they turned back around, so they got a little bit closer, and then they moved like this, and, you know, ended up at this point, so they've moved some distance away from A, and now they've gotten to that point. Right? So you see a pattern here. Third thing here, we have this green line where if we plotted it out, you know, again, this is a sketch and a contrived example, but I want to motivate the idea that if these were systems and they were asked to go from one step setting from A to another setting of B, for example, and you measured some kind of output, then you would have some sort of response over time. Right, And in this case, the output that we're measuring is distance from A. So I asked the system to go to B, and I'm measuring how far it is from A. And now when I plot that over time, you see two distinct things. You see this curve over here kind of changing until it gets to a point where it's no longer really changing. It's flattened out in all three cases. Now, the all three arrived at a point that's a, dis it's a different distance from A. But they're still all now, you know, not changing a lot anymore. And that's the difference. When the system is changing to go from one set location to the other, that is the transient response. So these motions right here, these, these traced out paths, that's the transient response of the system while trying to go to the location B. And then after some time has passed, they stay at this location, that is the steady state response. It's so really what you should, the way I think about it is that if a system is asked to change its state from one to another, it's going to start reacting to that. And over a short period of time, there's going to be a lot of changes in the system output. But then after that time has passed, the changes become minimal and the system goes into a state called steady state. So that's the steady state response after some time has passed and you got to a point where you're no longer changing a lot. And the transient response is when there's a lot of change happening in the system. Again, this is more qualitative. We're not putting any numbers or equations on it. But this is a fundamental concept when dealing with systems, linear systems, even nonlinear systems, and especially when it comes to designing a controller. Because think about it this way. If you were designing a controller 
that is going to set the speed on a car, like the ACC system, the adaptive cruise control or the cruise control system in your car. You would want the user to put in the speed that they want, that's the set speed, and then you want the car to ramp its speed from where it is up or down, depending on where the current speed is, to get to there. But you don't want it to get there too fast, because if it's going you know, faster than the set speed and it hits the brakes too hard, then that's uncomfortable for the passengers and the driver. But you also don't want it to take its, you know, its sweet time getting there, and it's like half, you know, half an hour to get to the set speed. The customer will not be satisfied with that. So the transient response can be shaped for the system in such a way that it delivers the response that's required for whatever the, the application is. But the steady state response is also very important because the steady state is how far I am. Like, for example, here, all these points arrived at different distances from A. But if I want to be very uh, particular about that distance and I want it to go to 100 units or 100 meters or whatever it is, I can shape the steady state response of a system. So these two play a fundamental role in how we can understand how systems work, their natural responses, and then how we can design control systems that then make the output that we are interested in do something in a very specific way. Uh, and again, these are very fundamental concepts. Understanding them is fundamental to your understanding to designing and implementing control systems. I hope you've enjoyed this endless engineering video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. There's more where that came from, you know. Think about subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. That way you get a notification every time we drop a new video. Thanks for watching.